Well, government has given the go-ahead for TV license changes in South Africa. Cabinet has approved the publication of the SABC bill and it's now open for public comment. Now, once the bill is passed into law, the current Broadcasting Act will be revoked. But to tell us more about this, we're joined by Tandy Smith from Media Monitoring Africa. Uh, Ms. Smith, thank you for your time and good morning to you. Uh, take us through this bill. Uh, what does it propose? What does it mean? Hi, good morning. Um, so with this bill, um, we are yet to, to receive the latest version out for public comment. Um, so we are waiting in anticipation to, to receive that. And once that has been released, as it's been um, said it will be, um, as you've mentioned, once it has been released, we will see exactly what it will be proposing. But there are a couple of things that we are going to be looking out for um, with, within the bill, and that is around, like you've mentioned, the changes to the license, um, the license collection processes, as well as issues around independence and stability of SABC and the, the governance of the institution. Right. And with that being said, how important are the public comments, uh, you know, into these license changes? Hmm. Well, public comments into these processes in general is is of critical importance because. You know, it, it, they, the, the public participation element of this process, um, you know, is, is it, it contributes to the decision making and contributes to the proposals put forward into this bill. And we know that specifically around the TV license issue, um, it's a very contentious issue. There, there are a lot of ideas and there are a lot of different, um, you know, uh, funding proposals around these issues that are being put forward. So we need sort of experts in the field and we need alternatives to, to consider when looking at these um, license collection issues. We know that the current funding model of the SABC um, critically needs to change. Um, you know, this is, this is something that has been outdated and, and a model that simply doesn't work anymore. So, so we are really hoping that we will see some innovative, um, good proposals coming out in this bill for licensed, um, licensed collections. I, I want to start with the SABC's funding mo uh, model and system that you've just mentioned. In your opinion, uh, where do you think the, the, the problems or concerns are with the model and where do you think the reforms and changes need to come into play? Well, for, for one thing, you know, we're dealing with a, an environment where it's no longer simply a matter of one TV, one household kind of setup. The, the model of paying a, a TV license per TV just, just simply, um, you know, isn't, isn't adequate anymore. It's, about, it's, it's now about the household. You, you can watch TV, you can access SABC content, SABC channels across a number of different devices. Um, so, so that concept needs to be revisited. The, the, the concept around government, um, government funding needs to be um, re-looked at as well because, you know, we can't simply rely on, on government funding or, or, or um, you know, that coming from, from that revenue because, you know, we, we've got other, other priorities and we, it, it's, not, it's not a sustainable solution. Mm. Um, and it, it also, you know, that also speaks to, to the independence. So it has to be some kind of mixed modeling around um, renewed yeah, models around how to collect the, the license. But I think let me, let me add that it, it, it is critically important that, that we figure out a solution to this. Yeah. Um, because without it, we, we don't have an independent public broadcaster. Uh -huh. and, and if we don't have that, then yeah, it impacts our, our democratic processes. I'm actually looking at the statement here by the SABC Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Yolandi uh, van Biljan. Some of the stats uh, presented here obviously include uh, annual growth rate in collections, but also what stuck off for me is that um, it seems what's telling is that only 68,000 of 401,000 uh, new TV license holders just in 2019 alone renewed their licenses a year later. It also is a reflection, I suppose, of even the, the payments in TV licenses. It seems you know, South Africans aren't quick uh, to always prioritise pay their TV licence. What do you think informs uh, this uh, behaviour from TV licence holders? Well, I think, there, I think there are a couple of things. I think, you know, the one is that we're dealing with an SABC that's been 
in absolute crisis for, you know, at, at least or up until the last sort of two or three years, at least a decade preceding that. Um, and that does impact the viewers um, or you know, yeah, the, the audience um, relationship with, with the SABC. We need to look at content as well. If you're not feeling, if you don't feel that you are getting adequate quality content, um, you're not going to be particularly willing to, to, to pay for that. Um, so, so it's a number of factors, and, and this is why it's not one easy, simple solution. Um, but again, it also goes back to our digital environment. If you access most of your content on a streaming device mm. um, and not necessarily on, on an analog television, um, you know, questions around TV license collections are also going to, going to, to come up. Um, so I don't think that there's one reason why people are hesitant to pay TV licenses. I think it's a, it's a number of issues, um, including governance issues of, of the SABC. Right. But, we, but what we have seen... Yeah. Oh. You may continue. Please continue. Just finish off your point. Oh, well, what, <laughs> what, we, what we have seen is that things are definitely improving over the last two or three years with, with the, the content, with the, the, the stability and the independence. Um, and, so, and so that contributes to people's sentiments around accessing good quality public broadcasting. All right, Tony Smith from Media Monitoring Africa, thank you so much for your time.